those who are here in person and all of those who are joining us online. It's so good to have you here as part of our Easter celebration this morning. I would ask that we begin our service as we sing together, Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus. Thank you. 
Hear the amazing good news. Jesus Christ is alive. Praise, Praise God. God who has lifted the veil of death and wiped away our tears. This is our God for whom we have waited that we might be saved. Let us be glad and rejoice in God's salvation and the good news of peace by Jesus Christ. We are witnesses to the impact of Jesus' life and the saving power of Jesus' sacrifice. This is the day that God has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it.
welcome you to turn to a neighbor and simply say, Happy Easter. Happy Easter. This time I would welcome the Ertone to come forward. I think there's some out there, if I'm not mistaken. Come on up.
you, Gavin. As we take just a moment now to lift up joys and concerns, something I want to lift before you and obvious first names and last letters out of respect for their names is Jim B. Uh, and Anne's brother John. Jim, I should say Don B. Don uh, had eye surgery this past week, and uh, I'm happy to say that the vision he had lost, he has regained, and he is thrilled by that. So uh, we lift uh, Don up, but also Jim and Linda F. Jim is going to be having melanoma surgery on the 7th of this month. I'd ask that you keep uh, uh, Charlotte in prayer, uh, Cheryl's sister Charlotte, who had shoulder surgery, a lady named Kathy, who received a knee replacement, uh, Carrie and Gavin. Carrie is having tests, and Gavin is looking to hopefully get a new job. I'd ask that you keep Beth and Oak in prayer. Um, if you remember Beth Oak and uh, Beth's mother, uh, Nima, all had COVID-19. Oak's been in the hospital with it. Is, I think he's supposed to be released with like uh, lots of oxygen and some special medications. Beth has now come down with it, or we're thinking of because of the lack of taste and smell, and just she's not feeling well. So please keep that whole family in prayer. Um, I'd ask you to keep Sheila in prayer. She has 30% of her heart working properly and some other health issues. Gary B with uh, prostate surgery uh, or prostate problems. Art H, who is uh, also dealing with COVID and is at Passive Hospital and ICU. So I'd ask that you keep these individuals in prayer. Uh, do we have any other prayer requests at this time? Let's bow our heads. Gracious God, what a wonderful thing it is for us to be gathered here on this Easter Sunday morning. The beauty of the weather, the beauty of the celebration is one that is life-giving to us. I give you thanks for all who gather here, either near or far away from this place, for we gather as one in your holy name. We come here celebrating the risen Christ. We find our hearts filled with gratitude. We find our hearts blessed even as we see the children come forward for the children's moment. I pray your blessings upon them and their families this day. Lord, I ask that your blessings would be upon our prayer list. The many who are not feeling well, those who remain unspoken. We're so grateful for your, your presence that comes alongside these individuals in their times of need, and we pray your healing touch upon them. We're also thankful for your loving care, for the joys of this life, joys that you give us through the faith, through one another, to the blessings that, that surround us each day. Most of all, for the gift of faith that you give us in the risen Christ. And so it is that we come here now. Fill us with your Holy Spirit. Fill us with a wonderful sense of your abiding love. And may we go from this place ready to serve, excited about the gift of faith that you have made possible in Christ. All these things we praise you for and give you thanks. In the risen name of Jesus Christ, as we pray together now our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom power and the glory forever. Amen. As we prepare our hearts for the offering of our tithes and offerings, I welcome you to hear this offering that has been prepared. Um.
Loving God, as we come before you on this Resurrection Sunday, we give you thanks for the gifts that you give to us so freely, and for the privilege of having an active role in the life of this church in such a way that the gospel would be shared throughout the world, that people would come to know your love and to experience, to experience through clean water, through medicine, through your love that points to you. Bless these gifts, we pray in the name of Christ. Amen. May we continue as we sing Christ as our <laughs> Lying there, and 
and cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lined with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head, the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him, I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brother and, and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that she had said these things, that he had said these things to her. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks. 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 As I began the message this morning, I want to revisit Wesley's order of salvation, something which I have referred to in recent weeks for a moment, just to, just to see how it might be seen through the eyes of a homeowner with a very badly conditioned house. This past week, Hosanna Industries Blitz built a brand new home for a family in four days. In hearing the dedication, I, I picked up on a, a key moment in that dedication service for the new home, just before the husband and wife received the new set of keys. The statement was made, the old house was to a point where it was no longer worth repairing. So we tore down the old home and made a new one. Well, that made an impression on me. In the first stage of Wesley's Order of Salvation, we recognize God's prevenient grace, that, that grace that runs ahead of us, that moves us into a further relationship with God. In a way, we, we imagine ourselves living in a spiritual house. We, we find ourselves becoming increasingly aware that a relationship is growing as it relates to us and God through the Holy Spirit's drawing us into a relationship with Christ. We are still in our present spiritual home, but we notice that there's a movement in our spirit. Something has changed that we can't quite put a finger on. Then we move on to convicting, justifying grace. This is where we, we still are present in our spiritual home, and we find ourselves confronted with some of the imperfections that are around us. Oh, there's a hole in the wall, and a, a, one of the window panes in the, in the glass is broken, and there are multiple cracks in the drywall, and the floor is beginning to uh, sag in some places because the foundation has become compromised. Our spiritual house is, is not in as good a order as we once thought it was, and we find ourselves a little bit convicted by it. In essence, we're coming to realize that staying in our current situation is not going to, to have a good outcome. This is the kind of grace that convicts us to the point that we are motivated to be aware of our surroundings, spiritually speaking, and find ourselves feeling an unrest about the thoughts of keeping the status quo any longer in our lives. We come to the point of justifying grace when, when we realize that Christ died for our sins, our personal sins, and a whole new world of grace and the reality of God's love begins to flood our spirits and hearts. There is a warmth and a receptiveness to what God is offering to us in the resurrected Christ. And in essence, we are now finding that, that the spiritual home that we find ourselves in is really becoming quite unacceptable. And we are motivated to seek something much better. This is where we accept Christ as Lord and Savior. This is where we talk about new birth, being saved, or regeneration. It depends on your background on, on how you talk about it. But this is where we say yes to a new spiritual house. This is where the old one that has been filled with sin and is causing decay and rot and disintegration is torn down, and a new one, built on the foundation of Christ's love, takes form. When we then move on to sanctifying grace, 
This is where we find ourselves in our new spiritual homes each day, and we, we seek to make improvements to our spiritual house. We, we learn how to love a little better in this situation and be a little kinder in that situation. We find that, that there's always work to do to improve the spiritual house, but it's done so with joy because the more improvements we make, we find the greater we understand this awesome nature of God's love and grace that is made known to us in Christ. Essentially, we find ourselves maturing and finding deeper understanding as we move along in our faith journeys. All this leads to the last part of Wesley Order of Salvation, which is to say, perfecting grace. This is a total love of God and neighbor made possible through the grace of Jesus Christ. Here we find the spiritual house of our dreams, where our relationship with God and our neighbors reflects the love of Christ in every way. Now, to this point, I haven't made any mention at all about the Gospel of John. Consider the spiritual house of Mary, Magdalene, and even the disciples. While they personally experienced and saw the many wonderful miracles of Jesus' ministry through his healing and teaching and examples of love, they were still living in a rather old spiritual house. And it was a sort of pre-resurrection house where their primary orientation to life was largely governed by their culture and the many ills and injustices that they had known. Essentially, they were oriented to understanding the insidious power of evil as it circulated around them. They especially understood the crushing nature of evil as they saw Jesus die on the cross. The event of the cross and watching Jesus die essentially placed a nail, that final nail, in the coffin for them. Their only hope was extinguished. Their spiritual houses were just crumbling down around them. They were just heartsick, and they felt dread at every turn as probably almost everything around them reminded them of Jesus and the impact that he had on them and on their lives, an impact that was tragically taken from them. Then Mary goes to care for Jesus' body. This is a gruesome thing to have to do. Jesus is not there, though. She heard the ghost of the disciples to share the news, and Simon Peter and the disciple whom Jesus loved, they run to the grave only to confirm what Mary has said to them. They return home, not much more disenchanted, another block or two that is starting to crumble in their spiritual house. The dread they feel is palpable. Mary, Mary remains at the grave beside herself. She peers into the tomb again, and, and there now are two angels sitting there where the head and feet of Jesus had been. And they simply ask, why are you weeping? And she answers. You know, it's really amazing when we think about it. That in this account, she, this, these angels, they, they didn't even phase her. She just answers the question. It's kind of like, it's kind of like that in our spiritual homes, isn't it? Sometimes we are filled with such despair that, that we're just numb to all that is around us. Things continue to crumble all around us and we just sit almost immobilized. She then senses someone near her, Jesus of course, and she turns and... And she hears Jesus ask the question of why she is weeping again. She has no clue who this is, but, but she kind of, in a, suppose, a mechanical way, asks where Jesus' body was so she can get about caring for him. Listen, Mary is a hot mess at this point. She is feeling dread to the very depths of her soul, to the very depths of her being. Probably more than she's ever had in, in any experience she's had. And then it happens. Oh, Jesus, Jesus must have had such compassion for Mary in that moment. That moment when he says to her, Mary, can you sense what that would have been like in that very moment? By her instant response, I can only imagine that for her to hear her name said with love and life from Jesus, I can only imagine the power of Christ's love Pierce clear down to the depth of her soul and at once evaporated all that dread that she had been feeling and replaced it with wonder and joy and love like she had never known before. Mary's old beat up spiritual home had been removed and in its place was a brand new one, a new one that would still have the paint drying on the walls. Jesus tells Mary to go and to let the disciples know of this new reality of the resurrected Christ. They didn't know it yet. But their old dilapidated spiritual homes were about to be replaced with, with awesome new ones as they learned about the new life that Jesus was providing through his resurrection. You know, this past week, 
I saw the joy of that family as they received the keys to their new home on Thursday. I saw a new chapter begin in their lives. I saw new hope in their eyes. What they had experienced was a tangible expression of God's love through Jesus the Christ. But people of God, each of us have spiritual homes. Some are lacking and show quite a lot of wear and tear because we have ignored them far too long. Sometimes our spiritual homes are crumbling because all we are doing is living out of a focus that defines this life as one that is filled with all sorts of injustices that are manifested in so many hurtful ways. In essence, our spiritual houses are tired and weary, and we have become quite jaded in the manner in which we live out life. But there's hope. On this Easter Sunday, on this Resurrection Sunday, I invite you to consider the dread that Mary and the disciples felt early on that first Easter morn. Their spiritual houses were a mess, but then it all changed. What was once dread was moved aside to make room for exhilaration, life that was new again. Only this time, it was brand new, a brand new spiritual house, all made possible because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Love people of God, this is the reality that we live under as Christians. Let me say that again. This is the reality that we live under as Christians. This is a reality that brings grace, hope, and love. It is a reality that offers forgiveness and redemption and grace and relationship with God through Christ. It is a reality where joy is the order of the day. Now you hear those words I just said? Grace, hope, love, forgiveness, redemption, relationship with God, joy, Christ. In my mind, all those things that I just mentioned make a rather hearty foundation on which to build a spiritual home. May we be so impacted by the resurrected Christ this day that we might find our spiritual homes made new again. From dread to exhilaration, may it be so for us as Easter people. And now this is the part where you have the participation. I did this earlier today, and the way our acoustics uh, are in this building, I want us to blow the windows out of this place. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. I think y'all can feel the One, two, three. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Amen. Shall we stand?
Go now in the grace of our Lord and Savior, the resurrected Savior, Jesus Christ. Go in his love, be filled with his peace. May his grace surround you always. Be filled with an assurance of a life that has no end. God bless you all. Happy Easter. Amen. Thank you.